In this video, I'm going to show you how to save data that's not necessarily associated with leaderboard data. Um, it can be inventory type data, quest data, feats of strength, uh, buildings you create, whatever you want, but things that you want to keep between your games, but you don't necessarily put them on a leaderboard. So first thing you want to do, go to File, Publish to Roblox. I already published to Roblox, so but you know how to publish to Roblox. Go to Game Settings. Right, that little cog thing there. See that little cog? Click that, game settings. Then security, enable studio access to API services. You have to turn this on or you're gonna get an error. Mine is already on. So if you turn it on, hit save. If it's already green like this, uh, I'm just gonna cancel it because I already have it turned on. So I am going to add inventory stuff to the world that I wanna save and they're gonna be apples and lemons. Let's go ahead and add an apple, all right? And I'll make it red. I don't want to put too much time into the um, apples and the lemons. I'm going to position it a little closer to the to the center of the world. Was that about four or five? There we go. And ten. So I don't have to run for it. Hit F to find it again. There we go. And I'll make this one by one by one for the size. Let's see. I will anchor it. So I can hang in the air and then can collide off so I don't bump into it when I go to collect it. I want to run right through it and have it disappear. All right, there's my apple. Let's go to server script service, hit the plus sign, add a module script. So module scripts are scripts you can call from other scripts. That's what we need. So I say game manager. I'm going to call my module script game manager. I'm going to make this module right here. I'm going to rename it because I don't like to have everything have default names. If you change it here, you must change it down here. All right, so we're going to, when we call that script, we're going to require it from some other script. We're going to get everything that's associated with this G manager. You're going to see what I mean in a minute. Uh, I'm going to have this session data table, right? And this is going to store my session data inside my game manager, right? It's just an empty right now. I'm going to initialize it. So I'll say local function, add player. When I add my player to the game, I'm going to initialize my session data. Right now, I'm just going to make it empty. So I'm going to keep apples in there. So I'll have apple equals zero, lemon equals zero. When we have our data store, we're going to so we're going to uh, assign the data store to that to that player. All right, now I always forget this part. Game players player added connect add player so when the player enters the game the session data is going to have every player that's playing the game so they when they enter we're going to put them into that session data table all right so we got that let's make a function that we can call from our apple or from any pickup so it's not local it's a regular function i'm going to say g manager because i want to call it from somewhere else and i'll call this pickup I have the player and I have the item associated with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my session data for that player and the item associated with that, and then I'm going to increment it. Right? Player, item, and then I'll just say plus one. Right. So apples that'll increase or lemons. So all the things you want down here, you may even want tables inside here too. It can get very complicated. All right, so that's good. Let's print things out. So I'm gonna say print player item. So every time I pick something up, I wanna see it for that player. And I gotta make my print player items. That is going to be local because I'm just gonna call it right there. It's just a helper script for development. I'll delete it when I'm, you know, for, for production. So I'll have our player. And I'll do a for loop for i and b in pairs session data for that player do print player I want the player name and i is going to be the item item i and value will be v all right nice okay so now let's go over to our apple so we can call this so we can start updating our session data all right we'll go over to apple hit the plus sign, hit a script. I'm going to call that script pick, right? Because you pick apples, pick apples and lemons. 
All right. I need to get my manager, my game manager. I'm going to call it MGR. So you do that by hitting this require game server script service game manager. So the name of, of that module script in server script service. That's going to give me access to my uh, public functions. I want to get a fruit that's going to be my apple or my lemon. I'm going to use the same script for both of those. And let's use a debounce so that we don't pick like 20 apples when we run into it. I'll say local function on touch other part. Let's check to see if there's a humanoid associated with the other part. So I'll say other part parent find first child that's a humanoid. If there is a humanoid associated, then we know there's a character, right? So I'll say other part, parent, that's the character. Now there might be a player or it might be like a zombie. So I'll say game, let's check the player service, get player from character, pass in the char. If the player service return, returns a, char, a player, we know we have one. And we'll check to see if can touch is true. Then uh, what are we going to do? Let's make can touch. Whoops. Can touch equals false. Well, we do some stuff with it. Then we'll say fruit. Let's make it invisible. Make it like it disappeared, right? All right. And then MGR pick pick up. All right. We're going to pick the apple, the player that got it, and the item which is the fruit, and I'll just pass in the name. Let me get rid of this while I'm typing that. And we'll go here, we'll say, we'll, we'll wait 10 seconds, and then we'll bring the apple back in case we wanna, wanna pick it again. So I'll say can touch now equals true after 10 seconds. The fruit, the transparency will equal zero. We should be good to go. Let's go ahead and add fruit touched connect to on touch so we can actually pick the apple let's go ahead and play it see if we can pick the apple let's go oh get the view output window so we can see the see our um our progress oh there's our apple haha -ha, we got it look at that we got one apple we have zero lemons that's fine let's go ahead and store off our is this oh there it is Let's get it again. So now we have two apples. So we can't store in between games yet. Let's do that. So basically, everything I put in that session data I'm, for my character, I'm going to save it off. So in order to save data, go local DSS for data store service, um, game get service, data store service local DS, which is the data store. I'm going to get data store. Yeah, just call this my data. You can call it whatever you want. Now, let's see what we got. Go down here. And we need to save data. We need to save data. We need to get data that's saved. Oh, and we need to save loop. So let's do a save data right now. We'll go local function, because I'm only going to call it from in here. Um, save data for the player. I'm not going to use a P call because I need this to be kind of a quick video. You can look that up. That's just to make sure that the save happens safely over the internet. So that's set async. I'm going to use the player user ID for the key, the session data for that player, right? So that saves everything off for of that player, right? We're gonna do a save loop. It'll save periodically for all the players playing. So I'll do save loop, say while true do. You want it to be like every minute, but I'm gonna make it every five seconds because uh, I want the video to be kind of short and testing it, I don't want to wait that long. I'm going to do a printout, saving in the loop, dot, dot, dot. So we see things happening. So for I and V in pairs, pairs, there we go. Session data, do, and then we can 
save data, we'll pass in the player, which is I. All right, nice. What else do we need? Uh, ooh, removing, player removing, so that we can call the save data. So local function, re remove, oh my gosh, player, player will get passed in. And when we remove the player, I'm gonna save the data. And then the session data for that player, I'm gonna make that equal to nil. All right, put another space in here. Now, I always forget this part here. Game players, player removing, connect, remove player. Sweet. All righty. Now we'll be able to save the data. Let's get it when we enter the game. So let's go back to add player. Let's go local data equals data store get async and we're going to use the player user id now the, it might be the first time the player has played so let's check to see if the player exists so if data then session data so the data does exist in this case just to add it to the player else it does not exist let's go like this there we go and we'll initialize the data at the end of that, let's go ahead and spawn our save loop, All right? Do we have our save loop here? Uh, save loop is down here, so we can't do it here. But we can start. We can start that by doing. Let's move the save data. I'm gonna copy that save data. Uh, I'm gonna do a Control X to cut. Actually, I'm just gonna move it up above my add player right because a roblox you have to define it prior to calling it now i can do my spawn save data no save data save loop Whew. i'm getting weary okay so there we go so now we should be good to go we have our data initialized let's play it see if we got some data Add my output window. All right, we're saving Oop, in the save loop. Let's get another apple. Oh, look at that. So the data store added to the queue. It gives me a little warning. There we go. So we got two apples. All right, so now when we leave and we come back, let's go ahead and print this out. All right, so let's go ahead and hit the off button. There we go. Go to Game Manager right here. Let's go ahead and print out to see if our player has our stuff. Remember, we have that. We have that print. Oh my gosh, was it print? Player items. And I'll just say player. Right. We're not going to keep that in production. We're just going to check to see down here to see if they got it. And we're coming in. There we go. Look at that. We got two apples. I know this is tiny. You can probably not see it. Can I make that bigger? I can, but it's in the settings. Anyway, we got our two apples. So we managed to save our data in between, our inventory data in between um, scenes or in between play times. That's pretty cool. So let me know if you have any questions. I know this is kind of a hard one. I know I kind of rushed it because I wanted it to be under 15 minutes. But um, good luck, and I will see you in the next video.